Hello everyone, we are Piotr Werens from the Archaeological Museum in Kraków. In this project I am an experimenter. Uh, Damian Stefański from the same institution. Uh, in the project I am responsible for the archaeological context and comparative material. Katarzyna Zarzecka Szubińska, I am a paleontologist and taphonomist. Retouchers were discovered during my doctoral research on bone material. Uh, in our talk, you would like to elaborate on Middle Palaeolithic bone retouchers discovered during excavation in the Chema Cave. The issue of bone retouchers in the Middle Palaeolithic context has been discussed many times in the literature. Uh, the presence of usure, which characterizes them, is relatively well described. Nevertheless, we decided on this project uh, because, above all, we wanted to gain experience ourselves and wanted also to create a comparative series that could help us in our further studies. So we stay in Poland. Uh, the Ciemna Cave site is located in the Kraków Częstochowa upland in the southern part of the country. Uh, most of the time, during the Pleistocene, uh, the site was on the northern border of Neanderthal dispersal. It is highly diversified cave system. Research on the current terrace was conducted from the beginning of the 20th century to the 1970s. It indicated the site as important for the study of the Middle Paleolithic. Artifacts obtained here by Stefan Krukowski allowed him to define the famous prongniks, which are the basic tools to define Mikokian. Since 2007, uh, under the auspices of the Institute of Archaeology of Jagiellonia University, we have started research in the main chamber of the cave. It allowed us to document several meters of sediments containing seven middle Palaeolithic cultural levels linked with Neanderthal settlements here. Uh, the presence of bone retouchers were a signal already uh, in 1930s by Stefan Krukowski in his monumental synthesis of Polish Baltic research. Uh, during our research, we managed to point another six specimen only three of them are almost completely preserved. One of them was unfortunately cut as a result of taking sample for dating. Uh, besides clear traces of user, retouchers have traces of shaping. These are both traces of breaking and planning of the surface. Preliminary results have shown us that the topic is very complex and multivector. Additionally, it provides results on taphonomy of bones, the mechanics of its breaking, but also on information on retouching of lithics. Because of its complexity, at this stage we can only say that this is the beginning of the project and the results obtained concern only a few of its aspects. The first step of our uh, investigation was to examine the artifacts itself, which allowed the first conclusion to be drawn. As shown on the slide, uh, the artifacts are linked with different cultural levels, which, together with the differences in documented user pattern, indicate that the model of the use could be more flexible. Uh, Basing on the chronology of the section, uh, the ca they can be dated to the last interplanetary glacial and the beginning of the last glaciation. Uh, only part of the collection has been studied so far, so there is uh, still a possibility to recognize more such tools. In the characteristic outline of the artifacts, together with the, uh, with the traces of shaping, uh, suggested that some of them could be held in the hand. Uh, we checked it uh, by different combination, as pointed uh, on the slide. If true, it could indicate the size of the hand and point also to lateralization. It means left versus right hand. It also raises a question of the difference in the Neanderthal hand which due to the different construction of the thumb could operate the tool much more precisely as suggested by Bardo and colleagues in 2020. Observed user traces on retouchers are not numerous, uh, which indicate that they were used on as a short-term part of lithic shaping process. We assume uh, this was a retouching intending to shape or reshape the age of the lithics. 
Uh, on the slide, you can see very flat, uh, invasive retouch, resharpening a tip of a side scraper, uh, which may be an effect of bone retoucher application. In case of bifacial tools, uh, refitting show us that mineral hammer was rather used, but later some part of edges could be modified with uh, organic one. Uh, retouching of lithics could be realized by a different interaction, uh, so we decided to check on uh, several of them. We did splinter and pressure chipping when the retoucher plays a passive role. We tested different variants of this experiment involving shafted and not shafted lithics, as well as holding the retoucher in the hand or placing it on the floor. Here you can see uh, another example. Uh, in these modes, we use direct punch to the edge of shafted and not shafted lithic. Uh, we also tested retouchers as a hammer during a uh, disarticulation process. Gathering material for research is not easy. Uh, due to the availability, we decide to use bovine bones, uh, also because of the mechanical proprieties of bone changing over time. Uh, we decided to use semi-fresh bones, which were seasoned for two weeks, and dried bones, which were seasoned for a couple of years. Uh, beside of Besides uh, soft cleaning, we did not process them with any thermal or chemical treatment. Breaking bones made us realize that this is uh, hard work. Uh, using flint tools is complicated, and the easiest way to break them is simply with uh, heavy stones. Crushing bones in this way is very easy. Uh, the experiment also made us realize how much bone marrow is available from a bone of this size. Uh, another problem we encountered was storing the results of the experiment. If it's not possible to work immediately, uh, then the smell can be very distinctive and it's best to keep the bone outside. Uh, the number of useful bone splinter is surprisingly not large uh, comparing to the dimension of the bones. The shape of bone splinters is often similar to artifacts we registered, uh, which cast some doubts on the intentional shaping. The first stage was to shape retouchers. Although, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the general outline of artifacts was similar to those produced in experiment, the protruding elements had to be broken off for a more comfortable grip of a tool. Bone breaking is very difficult. Uh, it requires a strong blow to our well wedged bone. It proves that the traces of tool shaping are not accidental and were used to adopt it to work. The first experiment we would like to show is retouching an edge by splinter technique, which involves a hard hit at an angle of 90 degrees. Uh, the bone is semi fresh. Uh, the action produced the deepest and the most developed traces. Uh, additionally, flint chips are visible in the cracks. The crete pattern is rich. It consists of many centered and concentrated parallel linear traces. The retouch is intensive, flat and bifacial. Another experiment is retouching an edge by pressure method uh, with retoucher placed on the floor. Then the bone is dry. The traces are shallow and only initially developed. Uh, the pattern consists of lateralized, dispersed, triangular and ovoid pits. It's accompanied by uh, rich parallel scratches. The retouch is unifacial, semi-flat and multiserious. And another experiment, uh, it is retouching of handheld flaked with direct punch. Uh, the bone is uh, semi-fresh, uh, the traces are initial, they are dispersed around the tip, they are mostly triangular and avoid uh, pits. Retouch is unipolar, uh, semi-abrupt and multiseries. The last experiment we want to show you uh, is another example of retouching by pressure method, but this time retoucher is handhelded. Uh, the bone is semi-dry, uh, the traces are well-developed, 
the pattern consists of centered, concentrated, triangular and ovoid pits. It also uh, has some linear features. Mm, the retouch is unifacial, semi-flat and multi-series. Mm -hmm. Coming to the conclusion, we would like to present our interpretation of the artifacts we have analyzed. Uh, the first observation is that they differ from each other. Uh, we can certainly say that they were characterized by different mechanical proprieties, which resulted surely from a different degree of uh, bone freshness. Although we tried very hard, uh, the use of dried bone causes traces to be only initial. Uh, such traces are visible on the specimens marked as A and B on the slide. Uh, interestingly, they also show very similar but live intense linear cracks uh, that allow us to state that they were manufactured from dried bone and probably treated as a tool per se. Similar pattern of concentrated uh, linear wear have been recorded on experimental retouchers for uh, splinter-like or pressure chipping. Uh, additional retoucher B could be a more flexible tool, as indicated by the presence of additional traces, which could be interpreted as direct retouching. Uh, on the contrary, artifacts C and D uh, do not bear a developed use wear but these are comparatively larger and uh, deeper. Uh, having semi-fresh bones uh, also do not produce such uh, clear and deep cavities. Uh, in this case, uh, we suggest that the bone uh, used was fresh and the retouchers were probably formed ad hoc to renew the edge of the tool during carcass processing. And although they were initially formed by breaking, they were abandoned after the work was done. Uh, the same observation can be done on another partially preserved retoucher. Uh, according to our interpretation, it was also manufactured on fresh bone, and the reason for that was to conduct direct retouching. Uh, but the last one is a real mystery for us. Uh, it doesn't resemble anything coming from our experiments. There is a clear spacing of cuts. Uh, it may be effect of the chopping of the fresh bone, uh, but uh, it's not excluded that it's a production waste or fragment of an uh, undefined bone tool. Uh, as we stated, uh, this is a shaping phase of the project and we have a clear need for expanding experiments uh, to gather more comparative data, uh, especially repeating the basic series uh, using a fresh bone. Uh, the essential thing uh, for us is to qualify and to quantify what we achieved. In this case, we're going to use nomenclature uh, developed by other investigators. For instance, uh, Malai et al. 2012, which we found very uh, useful. As previous research has shown, uh, there is a great potential in the proper documentation of both uh, the artifacts and the results of uh, the experiments and the best way to make it is to involve uh, eSIM microscope and 3D documentation which can greatly enhance conclusions. Uh, we have started already the 3D approach but uh, it doesn't produce satisfying effects so we need to find a solution for that. So finally, finally that would be all and uh, thank you for your attention.